you and viewers know that we're generally huge supporters of spinoffs here on Mad Money. We like it when companies decide to break themselves up self-help into smaller, more manageable, easier to understand pieces because it's a tried and true method of unlocking hidden value. But sometimes the spin-offs don't exactly work out the way we'd like, either because the new company can't deliver or because the timing's a little off. And timing can be very tough to get right. Consider the case of Now Inc. That's D Now, D N O W for you, home gamers. One of the largest distributors of energy and industrial related equipment that operates primarily under the, the Distribution Now brand, hence the ticker, as well as the Wilson Export banner. This business used to be part of one company that we love, National Oil Well Varco, the big maker of oil rigs. But in late 2013, National Oil Well announced it would spin out its distribution division. And on May 30th of 2014, Now Inc. started trading as an independent company. As luck would have it, that was some awful timing. Price of oil was flying at a high. It was at $100 a barrel when the breakup happened. But it peaked a few weeks later and ultimately plunged to the mid-20s early last year before rebounding back to 48 and change, still down more than 50% from three years ago. Now, Inc. is all about selling equipment that's used in nearly every part of the oil food chain, and the stock plummeted from 36 shortly after the spinoff down to 12 bucks in January of last year. It's rebounded to the low 20s as the price of crude recovered from its lows, but so far, well, it's been hammered again in 2017. It's down 18% for the year. But oil seems to have stabilized, bounced between the mid-40s and mid-low-50s, and when now reported a little less than a month ago, the numbers were excellent. The company delivered a smaller-than-expected earnings loss, much higher than anticipated revenue of 15% year-over-year, thanks to tremendous strength in the U.S. and Canada. As U.S. producers ramp up their drilling, and remember, in some regions like the Permian, oil's very profitable at these levels, producers and pipeline operators need more of D-NOW's merchandise. And it look, it look, if oil ever makes a sustained move higher, this company would be a huge beneficiary. Kind of walking a little tightrope here. Let's take a closer look with Robert Workman. He's the CEO of Now Inc. Get a clear picture of what his company does and the future of what it might hold. Mr. Workman, welcome to Mad Money. How are you, Robert? Have Glad a seat. To be here. All right, timing not great, but holy cow, you can do incredibly well even between 40 and 50. This quarter would not be the kind of quarter you could have had three years ago. What are you doing to make it so this is just a, a strangely good time for you, even if a lot of oil companies are hurting? Well, you know, in our business, we sell to the drilling rigs while they're drilling. So if somebody's out drilling a six-wheel pad, we'll sell to that drilling rig. But the biggest part of our revenue stream comes from our operator customers, the pioneers and the marathons, at the point when they build the tank battery to take the oil and gas out of the ground, okay. treat it, and put it in the pipeline. So it lags the rig counts by four to six months. So the big revenue growth we had Q4 to Q1 right. was really driven by late Q3, early Q4 rig count increases. The big increases were late Q4, early Q1. Those have yet to translate into our biggest revenue opportunity. So we're still ahead. I mean, if we had a good rig count again tomorrow, each week that we see a good rig count, we should be thinking further ahead that that, just, that D now could have some good numbers. Yeah, I mean, if the rig count were just to level out, I think it's what, 900 right now in the US? If it just stayed there, we we would grow every quarter for the rest of the year. That's incredible. Now the Permian must be booming for you. Yeah, the Delaware and Midland are. Right. Definitely the hottest areas. Now, now, and you're from there, right? So give me a description of the up, the down, and now where we are. Well, I was, uh, as a young child, uh, my parents owned a service company in a little town called Crane, 30 miles south of Odessa. Okay. And I used to work for this company. So I was out on the trucks, you know, hauling water right. and mud and oil and all those things. So I was there for the 83 bust, and I was there for the 87 yeah. bust. So I got yeah. to witness that stuff. Yeah. And I thought, this never can get any worse than that, ever. That will be the worst of it. And we just found out I was wrong. This was worse than that one. But you managed to save this company. There are many people who thought that this company could not survive in this environment. And not only did you save it, you have a good balance sheet. And you're doing some acquisitions. Yeah, we've, we've acquired 12 companies since we've spun. Um, probably 750 million-ish of capital right. deployed. And we finished the worst downturn of our lives, Q1, still net cash. That's incredible. Now, it's not just Permian, Bakken, and Canada. Oh, Canada, our Canada business is doing very well. Now, how is that possible? We always hear that it's such high-cost oil up there. Well, it's, this one is from organic share growth. We're, our guys are really killing it in okay. southern Saskatchewan, the Montney, the Duverney place. Yeah, if Canada could get some pipelines, you know, you've seen Kinder Morgan right. trying to get a pipeline exactly. and others. If we could get to the east coast and the west coast of Canada, it would be even hotter. All right, so tell me what has to happen to make it so that you can be actually uh, pretty profitable, because right now you're on the cusp. Right. So, you know, we originally felt like we could get to profitability uh, from EBITDA perspective by Q3. Right. Depending on how hard this breakup is in Canada, a breakup happens two months of right. the Q2 period. That's weather-related Yeah, it's where the ground thaws and right. they can't move. And it's recovering right now. So if it's not as strong of a breakup as past years, there's a chance we get to positive EBITDA this quarter. 
Well, that would be really yeah. this quarter. This quarter. And where do you think oil's going? Because we sure have a lot of it here. I, my theory of this is pretty simple. I think okay. it's going to be shaky waters between shale producers and OPEC for a while, like in maybe three, four, five quarters more. You'll find people who think it's not going to last that long. Right. Until such time that the underinvestment from 2015, 2016, and 2017, and probably 2018. And no, offshore market that we didn't spend right. the last four years, those are three or five year projects. Those are going to start re creating depletions in a third of the world's oil supply. When that happens, there's not, the shell, there's not a shell paint on the face of the plant that's going to solve this problem. Right, because there'll just be such a decline in supply. But you managed to see this coming. You did not lose a lot of money offshore. You managed to, I don't know how you capped those to make it so you didn't get hurt. Um, uh, well, our, back in 2014, our international segment, 50% of that was offshore. Right. I, and so we had some huge reductions because not only do we have reductions from the scrapped or stacked rigs, but when they send a rig to Turkey to get cut up because they've scrapped it, all use. that inventory comes off that rig to the shore right. base in Maka A or Aberdeen or Seattle Carmen or somewhere, and it supports the working fleet. So we've had to really you know, manage our expenses, branch out. We're doing really well in the Middle East on land to try right. to make up the difference for some of that. Well, I think you might be the lever play. If people think oil's coming back, you're going to make a fortune. Even now, I love EBITDA positive next this quarter. That would be incredible. Okay, that's Robert Workman, the president and CEO of NOW, which is DNOW, which has made a remarkable renaissance. With oil not really coming back. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.